polling environment, we should also be able to determine if voters were allowed to move freely to and from the polling units where they are registered to vote without any kind of intimidation or harassment. So we are not just looking at all the things that INEC are supposed to do, right? We're also looking at the fact that are there talks, political talks, intimidating voters, making sure that voters are not able to uh, 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 move freely to exercise to go to their polling units to exercise their right. Of course, on election day, Nigeria, we usually don't have movement on election day. That's why people um, register close to their uh, to the places where they live. So you can walk to the polling, to your polling unit because you might not be allowed to drive to your polling unit because I assume that you are, you are, you are close to your polling unit. Now they are, they've migrated voters to different places. Even the migration, that they did, that INEC did for some voters to the new polling units that they created. They ensured that those polling units are within the same vicinity uh, where, you, where you had the old ones. Because usually uh, all the polling units, you should not have more than 750 people in a particular polling unit. So that's why they, they congested the polling units, created new polling units. So, but the new ones are still within the vicinity of the old ones so that people can still walk to the polling unit. So if we have situations where people are being uh, harassed or, or intimidated for one reason or the other, we need to raise a uh, flag of that issue with our with our uh, election observation uh, control center so that they can immediately escalate the thing to INEC. We need to observe whether all the voting materials and tools for persons with disabilities are present, especially where we have uh, persons with disabilities. By virtue of the fact that when they were doing their registration, they already indicated that they are persons with disability. INEC or already has a record of where the person's disabilities are and the type of disability that they have. If you have those from the Albino Foundation, they require uh, a magnifying glass. If you have those who have uh, um, uh, who are visually impaired, they require the Briar Guide. The Briar Guide is something that they can put the ballot paper inside and they can they can vote on their own without anybody interfering or helping them out to vote. Because in the past, the blind would take a relation or we take somebody with them. They are usually still not sure whether the person voted the particular party that they want the, that that they had in mind to vote. So this Briar Guide is helping us to ensure that the blind take the decision on their own, and then they carry out the action based on, 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 on their conscience. If they, if they want to vote a particular party, they are able to vote that party without anybody helping them. That's what the Briar Guide does. So we need to look out for such kind of things, whether INEC provided them in those particular places where we have uh, persons um, uh, with, with such kind of disabilities. And then safety and security of election officials even the voters and other stakeholders that have come out to cast their vote, we need to report if there are if there are any any uh, issues that are threatening the life of INEC officials, any issue that are threatening the lives of voters, or even anything that is uh, threatening the life of the security people. We need to report all of that. Any violence related uh, thing, we need to report. We need definitely to report that. We also need to look at the management of electoral logistics and distribution of electoral materials. You also remember that in the past, uh, materials have not arrived um, uh, the location polling unit on time and, and all of that. This time our voting is supposed to kick off by 8.30. So we are assuming that by eight o'clock, everything is set. So if you have, if you arrive at the polling unit, eight o'clock, eight o five, no INEC official, immediately, immediately raise the alarm to say that, uh, this is 8.05, this is 8.10, or this is 8.20. No INEC official has arrived a particular polling unit. So, so we need to uh, pay attention to all of that. Of course, we are aware that INEC has always been using NURTW. They have a a, 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 an, M, an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding with NURTW to move all these materials. They've been using them since 2015 and, and, and all of that. So we have to pay particular attention to the fact that they are, they, they, INEC may be using individual members of these unions 
they might not have control over them. So somebody might decide to play funny. So we have to pay particular attention to the fact that they are supposed to arrive at the polling unit on, on, at, at such and such a time. I know that there was a time, even in the last election, in an Abra governorship election, where the polling unit that, that was closest to the INEC office didn't get material till around probably 10 or 12. So, but those ones that are far off got material. So people can play such kind of funny games to say that uh, they delay materials to the openness stronghold. So we want to pay particular attention to alert INEC that materials have not arrived particular polling units at, at a particular time. And when the materials eventually arrive, we also need to say, yes, the materials have arrived. So we'll, we'll talk about all of that when we are looking at um, uh, how to send message and what to do after we've sent messages. Mm -hmm. Then what we're also observing is the inclusion of in the electoral system, the civic education and the extent of uh, uh, citizen participation. You know that even when we did the PVC, um, not the PVC now, many of us observe the PVC distribution exercise, but it, when they posted the, the um, um, voters register in November last year and asked people to go and check whether their names are on the register, many of us sent reports to say that the turnout was very low. Many people did not get the information that they need to go and check the the pasted voters register or even take their phone and check it online to make sure that their names were in the voters uh, uh, register either they didn't get the information or many people didn't just uh, bother about that but those of us who went to the field to observe those we reported that in some places the turnout was very low in some places there was no no nobody even coming out to check their names so this is election in past elections we have also reported that the turnout was low in this place or the turnout was high in this place and and we have we have we've always reported that also and i remember somebody uh, one of our form one sister reported from uh, uh, adamawa to say that the turnout was high because the INEC official there she took the responsibility to go out of her way to do something like a town crier so that to, to sensitize and awaken the communities to come and check for their names in the voters register that November. So that's a kind of civic education. It's INEC's responsibility to do that. Civil society, they are only helping INEC to, 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 to do some of the things that, uh, um, even though INEC is doing it, but to add to what INEC is doing. That's why civil society organizations also do voter education, also do civic education for, for <clears throat> excuse me, for members of the public. So, so we, we should also pay particular attention to places like that. We also can report things about whether the, the turnout is large and whether the people are organized and stuff like that. That's what we mean by extent of participation. We've talked about the extent of human rights violations or election related uh, um, violence. I remember it, it was in 2019 election or so, or 2015, where we called the, the electoral officer in River State, one of the wards in River State, that our people had reported that there were shootings and, and all of that. So we called her, she said she can't go to that place, so she can't go to that place. Didn't our people tell us that they are, they are shooting there, that she's not sending anybody to that place, that she has recalled all, all her, uh, the, all the presiding and electoral officers from the world there because things had gotten out of hand like that. So we need to uh, be conscious of that. And as we say for election observers, your number one priority is your safety. Don't rush into a place where, because you think that you are wearing an election observer tag, yes, they will recognize me as an election observer. We'll come to that because our safety is our number one priority. Then we need to gather evidence of any violence, intimidation of election or officials or voters. Now we know that if anybody intimidates or tries to get an election observer, election official to announce a result under duress, it's clear in the electoral acts now that result is canceled. And any electoral officer that attempts to announce a result, a wrong result, is also clear in the electoral acts, it's an offense and the person will go to jail for that. So we need to look at all of this and make sure that the election officials are not being intimidated or forced to do something that they are not supposed to do. So we also need to report on the professionalism of security personnel. 
attached to polling stations. We need to recognize that also and watch them also so that we can escalate issues and also report to part the fact that there is no security personnel in this place or they, we just have only one security personnel in this polling unit. They are not supposed to be one, maybe at least two uh, security personnel in a particular polling unit. So we can also report such things uh, so that INEC that's, that's already partnering with the security agencies in the country, we immediately check their rule, their, their, get the security people to check their register because the security agencies, they usually have a register of who they've posted to the different polling units so they can check what is happening there uh, as the case may be. Also, observe the conduct of personnel from INEC. We also saw what happened with the uh, Oshun election where the tribunal had come out to say that there was overvoting. Ideally, with the way the beavers is constructed, with the way the beavers is configured, there shouldn't be any kind of overvoting. There shouldn't be any kind of overvoting. So people are still wondering, how is it that some polling units, one person, two people, how did these people uh, bypass the, the, the beavers? So we need to pay particular attention to the conduct of uh, uh, personnel of uh, INEC to understand what they are doing, to make sure that on that day, the beaver truly captures the people, uh, accredits the people who are who are who are who uh, have come to, to, to cast their votes on that day. Then we need to observe whether or not citizens appear to be well informed about the voting procedures and their rights. Because the first thing the presiding officer is supposed to do before the election commences is to inform the people who are on the queue, the voters, on the procedures for voting. We will tell he or she will inform them on, on the voting procedures and how it's going to go on. And also show them the empty ballot papers, also show them the beavers, that the beavers has not been tampered with and, and all of that. So, so we need to say whether the presiding officer was clear in his information or in his instruction, in his or her instruction to the to the uh, to the to the voters and make sure that the voters understand the 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 uh, the presiding officer if it's in a place where the the presiding officer needs to communicate in the local language they are free to communicate in the local language because the essence of communication is for the other party to understand what you are saying so if you speak queen's english uh, and nobody understands you, you have not communicated anything. So we need to pay particular attention to that kind of uh, thing also. And then we also need to pay particular attention to whether or not people with disability are able to vote easily. And then the integrity of the poor as it relates to the collation, the county and declaration of results. We need to pay attention to all of those things. Somewhere down the line, we will talk about the collation and counting of uh, and declaration of uh, uh, results because we need to pay attention to that also. So code of conduct for election observers. Please, if there is any issue, just put in the chat so that I can see any message that you are communicating. If I'm running too fast, so you can see. If you have something that is not clear, you can also put it in the chat that we can, we can respond to that uh, after the uh, slides. So code of conduct for election observers. The very first thing we need to understand is election observation is very sensitive. So we must conduct ourselves responsibly and ensure that we do not interfere with the electoral process in any way. And that's why INEX election observation guideline began with telling us the difference between an election monitor and an election observer. Only an election monitor can interfere with, with the process because the person can take decisions on behalf of INEC. An election observer cannot do that. That's why you say that we have to act responsibly and ensure that we do not interfere with the electoral process in any way whatsoever. Code of conduct for election observers. So we have to display our identification tag at all times so that um, even those posted to the polling unit will see us and see the tag because the presiding officer is supposed to introduce everybody that are going to be, everybody that is going to be happy him or her with the elections in that particular polling unit. And those people include the election observers. We'll see it in the, in the next slide. 
especially when it has to do with whether we can sign documents there on the, at the polling units or not. So our identification tag has to be on us at all time. It helps us also to prevent uh, uh, security people from harassing us when we are moving from one polling unit to the other, uh, as the case may be. So, so only where you get to remove your, 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 your security tag, I mean, your identification tag, is when our lives are at stake. Remember I said that the number one thing about this thing is our, our safety is our number one priority. We've had situations where uh, in a particular state, I think in Baeza or so, mm. where things got out of hand and people scampered into the bush and all of that. The election observer was reporting from the bush and, and we are told him to please take off whatever we identify you as an election observer and just mingle in with the crowd and, and all of that. So if you have the, the small jacket that they usually give uh, election observers, you take it off, you take off your tag, you become one of the uh, on a, uh, one of the voters who have come to cast their votes like that. So that uh, people, because political talks, when, when they want to uh, uh, begin to, to hit at people, they usually look at those ones who will immediately report their, their nefarious activities. You don't want to be caught up in that kind of uh, thing. That's why for election observation, your number one priority is your safety. So we need to also respect the laws of the country and the authority of INEC, uh, which is charged with the responsibility of administering elections in Nigeria. And then, so in other words, we must follow any lawful instruction that INEC gives or any lawful instruction that the security people gives. So the presiding officer, we have to pay attention to what the presiding officer is saying on that day to the voters and, and all of that. We should report to the organization any conflict of interest or improper conduct by a member of Zaba who is a part of our group. So if we see, uh, as form as members of form one organization and observing under the platform of form one if we see other form one observers doing something contrary to the spirit of, of uh, election observation even doing something contrary to the values that form one holds dear to them you need to report that kind of person because that person is portraying the organization in a bad light so you don't want that kind of thing because if other people report that that observer you, you stand to be blacklisted by INEC. So that's why we have to be very careful. Even the, the fact that we have, we have been privileged to observe under, our, under the banner of an organization, it's our responsibility to behave correctly. It's our responsibility to know and understand the values that drive the organization that we are, that we are uh, uh, observing under so that we protect the integrity of our organization at all times. So that's why it's important that we pay particular attention to what our roles and responsibility ought to be, our roles and responsibilities are on election day so that we don't flout them. Because if other people take up the, the thing and report us, it will, it, will, it will just be like a dent on our on our image. And I'm not sure we want that kind of thing. The, 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 the Form 1 is an organization that is held in high esteem in the country. So, so you don't want anybody that will not go there and start um, um, behaving uh, otherwise. So that's why, even though we are observing all the things that are happening, this part of the Code of Conduct for Election Observers also says that we pay attention to our own members to other observers who are observing under our platform because they understand that we can always escalate the matters to our, our, our organizations and our organizations can call those people to order immediately. We should maintain strict impartiality in the way we conduct our duty. At no point in time should we exhibit any bias or preference in relation to political parties or candidates. We are all human beings, we all have our political leanings or our political affiliations. As an election observer, the moment you don't that tag that INEC has given to you as a domestic observer, immediately you become neutral. Immediately you become neutral. So your political leanings, your political affiliations, just bottle them inside you. Because as an election observer, you want to be objective in, in, in reporting what you have seen. Don't allow your prejudice or your political leanings or your political affiliations to detract you from the responsibility that you are going to play on that day. 
because if things turn out well, and, and INEC, if there's an issue and INEC is able to troubleshoot and resolve the issue immediately, the credit goes to you, it goes to your organization, and it, and it gives us a, uh, the kind of election that we are, we, are, we are clamoring for, credible, inclusive, free and fair uh, elections in the country. So that's why this part is put in bold. INEC is particularly strict about this because, of course, on election day, you know, you cannot, nobody should be identified with any political uh, uh, anything that we uh, um, that that tests uh, like that that we make it look like somebody is advertising the political party because uh, campaigns would have stopped before that election day, and then nobody can go to the polling unit with any political logo or insignia or anything because that would be tantamount to uh, campaigning for a particular party on election day. So if voters are not expected to do that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's even more uh, uh, of a responsibility for the election observers not to go to any political, uh, to any uh, polling unit uh, carrying uh, with anything that we identify them with any political party. Because as an election observer, you have to maintain your neutrality at all times. And as an observer, we also have to go about our duties in a very quiet and modest manner. We should not knowingly or willfully interfere with the electoral process. Because if we wish to bring the attention of the, if we wish to bring the attention of the electoral official to any kind of anomaly, any kind of issue, we must do it in such a way that it doesn't make us, it doesn't look as if we are country his or her instructions. Hello, can we mute that person? So what we are saying here is, even though we are not supposed to interfere with anything that is happening, yeah, but well, we can discreetly inform the presiding officer of what we have uh, observed. So the person can either immediately uh, step in to do all of that because already at the beginning, the, the presiding officer is aware of who you are by virtue of the uh, identification that you carry with you so they know so but don't interfere with their work if you see anything the the the, the, the watch word here is being discreet about it being discreet about whatever you observe so that um, um the, the 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 person might not look like you are you are beginning to take the role of an election monitor but i think that the property for us to do is really to escalate the issue so that uh, uh, um, INEC can can by themselves uh, give instruction to the presiding officer to say we have we have we've gotten a report of something in happening in your polling units. Please can you uh, step in and, and and resolve the issue immediately or something like that. That's that's a will that's for me. That's what I will advise because it's uh, it's more of protecting ourselves and protecting the integrity of our organization. And, and our reports should be based on our personal observation or clear convincing facts. It should not be based on speculations, hearsay, or media reports. In the past also, people have sat in their houses because they were being, being lazy to go out, to go and observe after collecting the tag. So they are, they, are, they are looking at what people are tweeting, what people are posting on Twitter, or looking at the analysis going on on, on, on the different media houses I'm using that to report about about issues. That shouldn't be the what that that's what this particular uh, uh, points in the in the guidelines trying to guide against. Don't go and copy anything from Twitter and post it and send it to your election situation room. That this is what you observe in the feed. It's very very wrong. Or, or listen on what is what what they are saying on media houses and and then post that this is what you observe. Please, if you don't have anything to report, things are going smoothly. You can report that from your personal observation of events so far, everything is going smoothly according to the guideline of INEC. The people are not rowdy. The people are, the people are, 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 are conducting themselves in an orderly manner. The, 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 the INEC has all the, all the tools uh, and, 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 and instructional materials or voting materials for persons with disabilities. So you report something positive also, not, not only negative thing, but the watchword here is report something that you personally observed. 
with clear, convincing facts. I think we are. I think I think that point has been uh, uh, stressed very well. So you are not expected to make personal statements. Again, INEC needs to INEC highlights this also. So that's why we are putting it in bold in bold here. Where as an observer, we are not allowed to make personal statements to the media about what we observe in the feed. We are not because also again it's, it goes back to the fact that we are representing an organization. So you send your reports to the organization, send your reports to Form 1 situation room. Only the organization, only Form 1 has a right to make a statement on behalf of the group. Unless Form 1 has uh, delegated you to make, to start speaking to the media. But I doubt, because I will be frowned at that for, for different uh, observer groups to start speaking to the media uh, uh, up and down. I doubt that. Unless... Form one says you have the authority to speak with the media. If you don't have the mandate, if you don't have the authority from your headquarters to speak with the media, please, please, please don't speak with the media. Tell them no comments that you are, you are under the guideline of INEC. You are not expected to speak with the media. Only your parent body can speak with the media. Are we clear about that? Okay. So, so INEC, INEC is clear on this. Only the organization has the right to make a statement on behalf of the group. Because if you start making statements like that, INEC will not call you. INEC will call uh, uh, whoever is in charge of Form 1 because uh, that's the person that's, that's uh, signed the whole document with INEC. Uh, so, so that's the person that they are going to hold responsible if they are members, if uh, Form 1 members start speaking uh, arbitrarily to, to, to media organizations. You, you have situations where they can invite you to the, to the station, to the TV station. Let, the, let your people know in Abuja or your head office know that uh, you, are, you are going to be a, a, a public affairs analyst uh, on the station, on XYZ station, that you have invited to come to the station to speak. And like that. So, so they know that you are you are there. You are representing them. So, 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 uh, 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 and they don't. They won't have anything, any issue with that because right there, you are in a station and you are being, uh, you are discussing what is happening on ground. That's fine. So, but don't uh, because you can have media people who just walk up to you as an election observer and try to say they want to get uh, one or two uh, uh, um, uh, story, story from you on what is what you've observed so far and all of that. Please don't entertain them. They are also there to observe as you are also observing. So if they want to, if they want to story to publish on their newspaper, let them observe and, 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 and take their own reports down. So you are not expected to prejudge the outcome of the election. For us now, so many people, they are making, they are all making, we are all making uh, our own, passing our own judgment outcome now. They're, they're doing many permutations in our head on how the election is going to go, uh, what the likable outcomes are, are, are going to look like and all of that. We are not supposed to indulge in that kind of thing the moment we step out. In fact, the moment we step out, we, like we said up there, do our duty in a very quiet and modest manner. We are not expected to accept any gift or favor that might influence our work. All these things are a conflict of interest and, and all of that. You have, you have to exercise sound judgment and display a high level of personal in, uh, discretion. So I think we've talked about that uh, uh, a lot. Display a sound, exercise sound judgment and display a high level of personal discretion. We have to stress that very well. So when these are the things that we also stress when we do our step down training to other members of uh, to other observers who are not privileged to be here. So because this one we need this this particular um, slide will be sent to us. So we need to emphasize these things. We want to finish the election. We still come out with our integrity shining the way it has always shown in the country. So we want to we want to maintain that. So we want our election observers to understand that this is the value that is driving our organization, and we take that value with us wherever we go to do all the things that we are doing, so that 
uh, even though INEC has said maintain high level of personal discretion, we already know that as an organization, we, we, we maintain that kind of thing. So INEC is not telling us anything new. This is who we are, and this is what we have always done. So we have to let those whom we are going to do the step down training for understand that very well. And then this other one is also put in bold. You should not attempt to take part in the actual administration of the election or resolve disputes or complaints to avoid the possibility of compromising the election observers, uh, observer groups in eventual position on the matter. So you see why INEC says, the, why INEC will frown on people who are talking to the media. Because first of all, you don't know the position that Form 1 is going to take on a particular issue. Because a Form 1, as, as a body, will probably need to discuss it, it will probably need to discuss the issue and, and, and make an informed judgment based on all the facts after they investigated and collected the facts. But when you rush to start speaking, people will not mention your name. People will, you know, you know how the media people carry the news. They will say Form 1 say. Meanwhile, Form 1 is not Form 1 that has spoken. It's you that has spoken on behalf of Form 1 when you have not um, uh, authorized to speak on behalf of Form 1 or when Form 1 had not collected all the facts available to them so that they can then make informed uh, uh, judgment. But you have rushed to speak and the media has carried it and the media will say form one because they love uh, 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 making sensational headlines. And uh, it's not until you, you, you particularly go down to the news that they have published, you now realize that there's no correlation between sometimes what they have reported and the headline that they have put there. Many people, our attention span is slow. Uh, it's not much. They, they just see the headline and run with the headline and they start sharing it. They start sharing on all their platform and all of that. It, and, and, and it will just be going viral like that. So that's why it says, don't, don't attempt to take part in any actual administration of election or try to resolve any dispute or anything. Like I said, if you observe anything, send the report to your election situation room. Let them handle it. Let them escalate the issue to, to, to INEC. INEC will give us the contact that they are going uh, that we are going to be uh, escalating uh, 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 reports to the citizen center uh, citizens INEC citizens contact center is being set up. They are they are going to have the already. I think they've already started publishing because I've seen it in some of our uh, 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 WhatsApp groups. They've started uh, publishing. Uh, procedures for election observation, and they have some, some phone numbers there also that people can call to resolve uh, any issue. But this is in bold. Don't participate in the actual administration of an election or resolve disputes or complaints because you don't want to put uh, your organization in a position that they will not start defending themselves because uh, we, we, don't, we don't want that for, that kind of, for, our, for our organization at all. Avoid conducts or communication capable of disrupting the voting and counting process. I think that's been emphasized also. Yeah, so this one is also put in bold. You must not take any unnecessary or undue risk. I think I've said it from the beginning. Your safety overrides all other considerations. You must not take any unnecessary or undue risk. Your safety overrides all other considerations. So if this starts happening like that, the first thing we tell people is remove anything that we identify you as, uh, as an observer and just join the crowd and start running with the crowd. If it's something that needs, if you, if you need to get out of that place immediately and, and all of that, don't take unnecessary risk. INEC is clear about that. If, you, if you've insured your life in, with any of the insurance company, well and good, but INEC doesn't have insurance for any domestic observer or international observer or, or so, uh, things like that. So, but we need to understand this very well. Our safety overrides all other considerations. And that's why they put that in bold also. It's also important for us to know that as an observer, we are responsible for our own safety and security. That's why I say INEC does not have any insurance for any domestic or international observer. Your organization that has sent you to the feed understands that also. So 
they they trust they trust your sound judgment to be responsible for your own safety and security. So is this these things that we put there? You can see the source. I need guidelines for election observation. We just abridged the version, took some things from the guideline to put here for the for the training. So you can see that the source is uh, is on, underneath there. I need guidelines for election observation. So as an observer, you have no immunity. You are not the president. You are not the governor. You don't have immunity. So if you commit any electoral offense or other offenses recognized by the law, we will be prosecuted. There's no two ways about it. We don't have immunity as election uh, observers. So that's why we are very, that's why we, we, we keep stressing some of those points that INEC has in their guideline about making, uh, uh, talking to the media or about uh, uh, participating, uh, 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 trying to be to, to be part of the electoral uh, uh, process where you are not an election monitor and, and all of that. So I keep making the point that if you observe anything, quietly send your report to your election situation room, let them handle it. They know how to escalate the matter to INEC. Observers must be very careful in the choice of words they use in describing what they observe before, during, and after elections. We have to be precise in our in, 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 in reporting any incidents that we observe. No embellishing. Don't have to embellish the thing to make it look uh, uh, delicious or, or sound, sound uh, uh, sweet to the ears or, or stuff like that. This is not the time that we exercise our storytelling, our storytelling skills and all of that. We just have to be precise, make it uh, brevity. You say brevity is the soul of wit. Just make it brief, straight to the point. The time, the type of incident, the location of the incident, finish, and then we move on and trust that the, 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 the people who are, whom we have uh, reported the, 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 the report, uh, sent the message to, we know what to do uh, and, and all of that. It says, if you flout these guidelines, your accreditation may be canceled. I've said it before at the beginning, and they can blacklist uh, any organization and all of that. So you know that in the past, they just say, uh, apply as domestic observer. But now, increasingly, they want, they want the organizations to even show proof. Even now, you will understand that if, you, if, if, if the headquarter is going to tell you, the headquarter will tell you that even when they were applying to become domestic observers, INEC is saying send reports of the previous, previous uh, uh, election that you've uh, observed. They want to see proof that you actually observed the election and you submitted a report to them. And you know that even now they have a, a timeline that they that that you can submit your report after the election. They, they have all of those kind of things. They even ask you to submit the names of other organizations that can stand as reference uh, uh, reference for your organization. Uh, is it referee for your organization or reference uh, to reference your organization? Because they don't want any kind of organization. They don't want to accredit any kind of organization as, as domestic observer. So if you go out this time and you observe, and then they find out that things, uh, maybe maybe you, you did not particularly uh, uh, train your observers very well, and they were not going according to the guideline. They, it's, 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 it's a query mark on the organization. So next time they might be reluctant or they might even decide to cancel your accreditation before the next election, based on what the uh, what has transpired in the first election. So we have to be very careful. I keep stressing the fact that we we we, we are known for our integrity. We want to maintain that integrity. We want to come out shiny. So so so. That's why we are going to send this slide to us. We are going to talk to the people that are, uh, the other observers in the states. Uh, so, so we are the focal persons. We are the ones going to step down the training. So we need to stress all of those things because this this election circle, there are too many. Uh, uh, there's there's a high political consciousness. There's a tendency for people to start speaking when they are not supposed to speak uh, because the emotion is boiling and uh, there's so much emotional investment going on in this particular uh, election. So that observers have to just be careful and and, and maintain their integrity and maintain. Uh, and try to adhere strictly to the guidelines that INEC has uh, 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 given for election observation. 
Now we come to procedure for voter accreditation and voting. So this part, this one is also particularly important because we are looking at yes, no, this is the first time people are going, they are using BVAS on a grand scale. Yes, they did a mock exercise on February 4 to see how the BVAS is going to work and all of that. But since we are election observers, we have to also pay attention to the procedure for uh, voter accreditation and uh, and voting. So the first thing is to understand that INEC has made it composite for all presiding officers to use the BVAS, the bimodal voter accreditation system for authenticating voters during the accreditation process. That's why we don't want to see any, any place where they say uh, one person, they have over voting by one. No. If there is a problem like that, we escalate immediately. And you see that um, even now people are saying that immediately they finish uh, the voting before they even start sorting the ballot papers and start counting the ballot papers. The, the people are insisting now that INEC officials there tell them how many people the beavers accredited. So they see the number. Because you can point it out, you can see the number of accreditation on the beavers machine. So you note that number down before they even start sorting or counting the, the thing so that people are not working to the result of the number that they, 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 they have in their head that the, that the beavers machine accredited. No, they don't want that kind of thing. So, so any electoral officer that is trying to flounce this rule, please report immediately so that INEC can step in to see what is happening there. So it's also compulsory for all eligible voters to go to the polling units with their permanent voter card. I'm sure that some of us have seen the message going around that even if you don't have your voter card, still go to the polling unit. Just what all you need is to, to, print out the, uh, the, to print out the fact that you are on INEC register. If you have your, uh, your V number, go to the polling unit. Please, no INEC official we attend to any voter without permanent voter cards. That message has been flying around. We escalated it, and you heard Professor Mahmoud Yakub saying it that nobody, according to the electoral acts, according to the guideline, nobody that should nobody will be accredited without without the PVC. The first thing you do when you get there is to present your PVC. If you don't have PVC, you don't have any business being in the polling units or being on the queue to vote. So, so all eligible voters must go to the polling units with a permanent voter card. No accreditation can be done without the PVC. So no one will be allowed to vote if they cannot present their PVC to the INEC official. So he or she can authenticate their PVC with the beavers. So even if you bring a slip of paper that you have printed from an online voter register to show that, yes, INEC did not give me my PVC, but I know that I'm in their register, so I'm eligible to vote. Please, let's, do, let's not interfere. Let's just report such issues. We understand? So because nobody will be allowed to cast their vote without their PVC. The reason is this. As at the conclusion of the uh, uh, PV distribution exercise, every state is supposed to send the number of PVCs distributed, polling units by polling units, word by word, local government by local government, state by state to the uh, to the uh, INEC headquarters in Abuja. The thing is this: when there is a dispute, what we call it lead of margin between the first candidate and the second candidate. Before, it's usually, they usually look at the number of people who are registered in a particular polling unit to decide whether they should call the election conclusive or not. But we made uh, 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 an objection to that because it's not everybody that registered in a particular polling unit that will come out to vote. It's only those who are eligible. And those who are eligible are those with their permanent voter card. So why are we looking at the number of people who are registered and not looking at the number of people who collected their PVCs to, 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 to be able to vote? So the electoral act now has come out to say, when you are looking at the margin of lead between the first person and the second person, take into consideration those with permanent voters card. So if there's a place that they've canceled an election, 
they are not going to be looking at the number of people registered in that place. They're going to be looking at the number of people who have collected their PVCs in that location to decide whether if they decide not to conduct the election uh, uh, there again, or if they conduct the election, it's not going to make any difference to the outcome of the, the result they already have. If it's going to make a difference to the outcome, then they, they are obliged to conduct elections in those places that they've canceled the election due to one reason or the other. That's why they stressed it that nobody will be allowed to vote without their permanent voter card. Are we clear about that? The other thing is nobody can vote on behalf of another person. That is one cannot, you cannot send anybody with your PVC to, to the polling unit to say they should help you cast their, your, your vote. The reason is because the beavers will have to read your fingerprints. If it's not able to read your fingerprint, it has to read your face to make sure that they, they, you, you match the information that is stored in the beavers. So even if I give somebody my PVC to go and vote for me, yeah, the person can present the PVC, yeah, they can see my name, they can call up my, my details in the beavers. But when it comes to authenticating me or accrediting me, that's where it will fail. Because the person that I have sent does not have my fingerprints. I does not have my facial recognition. All these things, fingerprint, facial recognition, they are unique to us. God did not create two people with the same fingerprint or the same facial recognition. Even if they are identical twins, it's still going to be different. So those are the things that INEC has put in place to ensure that there's, there's, there's in integrity in the voting process or there's credibility in the voting process. Or like in the past where people can do double, they can turn print so many ballot papers and all of that without check and balance. So, but we have these beavers that is checking us and making sure that nobody, uh, 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 is, 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 is every, every person has one vote. Then the only people allowed to enter the polling units are eligible voters. And I've said that eligible voters with PVC. So you can be an eligible voter by virtue of the fact that you are 18 years, you are Nigerian, you are registered. But if you do not have your PVC, that's where your eligibility stops. Because eligibility here means that you've, you've fulfilled all the requirements to be able to cast your vote on election day. And part of that requirement is the fact that you've collected your PVC. So candidates or, or, polling, or polling agents are also allowed. Election officials are also allowed. Security personnel are allowed. Accredited observers are also allowed. And any other person that the presiding officer thinks has a lawful reason to be at the polling uh, units. Those are the people that are allowed at the polling units. No political talks are allowed at the political, at the polling units. Then this one, we, 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 we put it on its own slide. And you can see that accredited observer is in red. Remember I said something about you might be required to sign any something at the polling unit. It's called polling unit attendance register. Let's put that at the back of our mind. Polling unit attendance register. So every polling unit has an attendance register that will be signed by the following categories of election personnel. You see the colors election personnel now the presiding officers, that's the POs. The POs are the presiding officers. The assistant presiding officers, that's the APOs. The polling agents, the security personnel, accredited observers, and media. So you see that because you have your tag on, at the beginning, the presiding officer will acknowledge you as, a, an, elect, as an accredited observer. So when you read the regulations and guidelines for the conduct of elections, number 16, Number 16 on page eight says that attendance register in PU booklets will be signed by the following categories of election personnel. The POs, that's presiding officers, the APOs, that's the assistant presiding officers, the polling agents, the security personnel, we that are accredited observers and the media. So if you have, if you are in a particular polling news at the beginning, that's, it's not that you have uh, uh, you have moved from one polling unit to the other. If you are at a particular polling unit at the beginning where they start uh, uh, election, that's what I will encourage people to do. Stay at a particular polling unit when they are starting that election. So you can, you, ha you can have the opportunity to sign this booklet before you start roaming around 
could look at what is happening in the different other poly other poly units. So it's very important. We are we 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 have our tag and our election kit on us that identifies us as uh, uh, accredited observers. So because we are accredited observers, we have to sign this attendance register in the PU where we are observing. This is a this is this is a marked difference from what has been happening in the past. So all of this is that will ensure the integrity of the of the polls. Then accreditation, INEC is going as usual. INEC is doing uh, 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 continuous. They call it uh, 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 this CAS or something. Continuous accreditation and voting. So that's what they are going to be doing. As, 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 they've, as, they've, as they've always done in, in, past, in past elections, starting from 2015. So as soon as someone gets accredited, the person is issued a, a ballot paper to go and cast their vote. So that's why even now, you cannot, really, you cannot really have a situation where you have less votes. You can have, uh, you, you can have a situation where 100 people got accredited and only, only 70 something people uh, voted. You cannot have that kind of situation now because as soon as they fin you, you finish accreditation, they issue you the signed stamped ballot paper and you go over to the cubicle to, 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 to template and cast your votes. So that at the end of the day, the, the, the number of people who actually voted should be the same number of people who are accredited. So it's, uh, it's at the point of collating, you cannot say, oh, the, some of the votes, some of the people did not cast their vote very well. So those votes will become uh, uh, invalid votes or rejected votes. But when you add the invalid votes and the valid votes, the number should equate the number of people who are accredited because it's simultaneous, it's continuous accreditation and voting that is taking place. It's not that they finish accreditation, people go home and then they come back, no. So long as you are on the queue there, you are going to be accredited and you are going to vote as, as, as soon as you got, uh, you, as soon as the, the, the accreditation is done. So it's going to start by 8.30 and, and hopefully finish by 2.30 for those places where you have limited number of people. For those places where you have so many people, so long as you are on the queue before 2.30, you will be allowed to cast your vote the, until the last person on the queue uh, or in the queue finishes uh, accreditation and voting. So the process starts with authenticating the voter. You present, the voter will present his or her PVC to the electoral officer. The officer will check the voter's register to make sure that the voter is in the right polling unit. You know, I said that some people have been migrated to new polling units. So, so if you are not in that polling unit anymore, the officer will politely inform you that you are no longer in this polling unit. You are, you are and direct you to the to the to the polling unit where you are supposed to be casting your vote. But what we are telling people is, since the ballot, since the voters register will be pasted in the polling unit, the first thing you first of all you do is to come there and check whether you are actually uh, still in that polling unit, so that you can quickly go to your uh, to to the polling unit where, where, where you have been migrated to. If, for instance, in Lagos, over 1,500 and something polling units were affected. So, so people might still be thinking that they are going to vote in the polling unit where they voted uh, uh, in 2019, not knowing that they moved them to another polling unit, just so they can decongest that polling unit where, where you were formerly. And I think those things were done in alphabetical order or something like that. I, I can't really remember. So, but the, the, the thing is, you, the, the, you, they have to check whether you are in the right polling units. And then they authenticate the, beaver, the PVC with the beavers. To do this, the officer will use the beavers to scan our fingerprints or, 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 or take the, the picture of our face in case the thing is not able to read our fingerprints. Now, if the beavers is not able to authenticate the voter, all of this information is because we are election observers. That's why I'm putting it here. So if the beavers is not able to authenticate the, the voter by reading his or her fingerprints or face, he or she will be asked to step aside. So we don't want a situation where 
a, a voter will start uh, arguing and shouting. Even, even if they are doing that, we are observers, we are not even supposed to uh, 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 step in or do anything like that. We have the, the security people there who are supposed to play their role to ensure that there is uh, law and order in every polling unit. But our own is to escalate the issue, to say uh, a, a, a particular, in this particular polling unit, one or two people were not able to be accredited by the beavers. So, but we're hoping that that kind of thing will, is, it will be like an abnormality or something like that. But if the beavers is able to authenticate the voter, the, the, the officer will put the ink on the voter's finger to indicate that that person is cleared to go and cast their vote. At that point, it will direct you to the next officer who will give you the ballot paper that they will stamp, that they will sign, and that they will put the date of the election and give to you to go and cast your vote. So once the accreditation is completed, the electoral officer will then issue the voter with the ballot and direct him or her to the voting cubicle to cast their votes. Now we have to pay particular attention to this. In the past, when we were using card reader, card reader will fail, they will bring incident form, but this time around, incident form has been abolished. No incident form is going to play any role in this election. So if the beavers face to accredit the voter, the person will be advised to step out of the line and find a way of escalating his or her issue to the, uh, to the commission in any appropriate way. I think people these days, they can just go on Twitter to type the thing. But those who are not familiar with Twitter and all of that, they will call the numbers that INEC will issue to report that the, the, the beavers was not able to uh, 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 authenticate them. And that's so, so, but the electoral officer will not be able to do anything. The electoral officer, will, they will tell the person to leave the polling unit, but in the voters register, they will not label FA, denoting third accreditation at the left margin of the voters details on the register. It's very important to have that so that in the analyzing the, the, the elections, INE can look at the number of failed accreditation that they had. So they can start saying, why did the accreditation fail? Why, why was it that the, the, the beavers was able to read people's fingerprints or their face to, to, to accredit them and, and stuff like that? So, but we're hoping that this will be like a, 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 an anomaly. Uh, it, 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 it's not going to uh, the, the mock one that was carried out we didn't hear anything about fair accreditation so we believe that the, the beavers will, will do what it's supposed to do but where the beavers has fought the presiding officer will immediately inform the people on the queue, the voters so by virtue of informing them the security is, uh, is paying attention Accredited observers are paying attention. The media, if they are there, they are paying attention. The polling agents are paying attention. We inform them that the beavers has a problem and escalate the matter to the world uh, electoral officer who or, the, or escalate the matter uh, uh, to the higher ups so that they can send another beavers. Now, if they are not able to get a new beavers to that polling unit by 2.30, what it means that the election in that polling unit will be canceled for that day. And the election will start again the next day. That's why the, 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 the guideline says, if by 2.30 p.m. a new beavers has not been brought, the presiding officer will inform the people and postpone the election to the following day. That's why I said incident form has been abolished. If the beavers face, they wait for a new one. If the new one doesn't come by 2.30, they postpone the election to the next day. Here in Lagos, they already have uh, a lot of uh, uh, beavers. They also have uh, spare, spare bonus beavers that they can quickly um, um, configure and send to the polling unit to replace the one that has failed. So no, we, we don't have any cause to be, to be scared that um, uh, things will not work out on election day. So like we've said, there are priority voters, all persons with disabilities, heavily pregnant women, nursing or breastfeeding mothers, and the elderly shall be granted priority access to the voting, to, to voting at the polling units. If that is not happening, we need to escalate the matter. Voter 
not to mark a mark, not to make a mark for identification. All of these things they are in the rules and regulation. You cannot mark your ballot paper in any way that the, the, the that, that when somebody picks the ballot paper, the person will be able to identify will who, who, who use the ballot paper. All of this thing is to ensure that nobody starts playing any funny game of showing people that this is why I voted because you have sold your votes or because you want pecuniary pecuniary gain from casting your votes. It, it doesn't, it, it won't work. That's why INEX says that you cannot even go to your to the cubicle to cast your vote with your phone or any recording device. So, so there is no way anybody will know who you are voting for. So we have to impress it on, on, on the other observers to watch closely, to watch keenly whether anybody is going into the, pol uh, into the uh, polling booth or cubicle with any recording device or with their phone. Because ideally, you are supposed to hand your phone over to the electoral officer before you go to the cubicle. So you don't have any way of recording the votes that you've, you've cast for anybody. So if a voter accidentally spoils his or her ballot paper, the presiding officer will look at the ballot paper. And if the person is satisfied that the ballot paper is spoiled, they can issue another ballot paper to the voter in place of the spoiled one. And then they write canceled on top of the one that has been spoiled because they are going to account for each ballot paper that has been given to them. Because at the end of the day, all the ballot papers that have been issued to a particular polling unit has to be accounted for. If there's any polling unit that was given 500 or 750 ballot paper and is returning with only 600 ballot paper or 750, uh, 710 ballot paper, you have to account for the 40. If it's, if it's 737, you have to account for the, for the other three. So that's why even the one that has been spoiled, they, you can't tear it. All you need to do is put cancelled on the spoiled ballot paper and also uh, present it for 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 uh, auditing purpose. Use of phones and other electronic. So I've just said this one: telephones and other electronic devices capable of taking pictures are not allowed in the voting boxes. Now the, the ballot the ballot booths or the cubicle. Voters may come to the polling unit. You can come to you can go there with your 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 phones and device, of course, because they can they can use that to escalate issues and send. But when you have been accredited and you have been given the ballot paper, you cannot you 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 you, you drop your phones. You cannot go to the 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 the, the, the polling booth with your phone or anything that can record anything. After to printing the ballot, while still in the voting box. The person shall carefully fold the ballot, the marked ballot paper, and proceed to drop it in the appropriate ballot box. You know that on election, uh, on, on this next Saturday that we are going to have the election, three, three, three positions will be will be or uh, uh, the people will be voting for three positions. They will be voting for the presidency. They will be voting for the members of the National Assembly, that is the Senate and the Federal House of Representatives. So they are going to have three ballot buses. So they have to be careful. All the ballot buses are marked anyway, with, and they, are, they, are, they usually come in different colors, the presidential, the Senate, and the Federal House of Representatives. So you, you, don't, you, you, drop the, you drop the appropriate ballot paper in the appropriate ballot bus. On March 11, it's going to be for those places where they are going to be doing, where having governorship election. So it's going to be, governorship and state house of assembly election taking place on, on March 11. So states like Ikiti and Oshu, uh, Edo State, I think Baeza State, Kogi State, where you, have, where you have staggered elections. So it's only the state house of assembly election that will take place on March 11. So presiding officer shall place the ballot buses not more than two meters away from the voting bus in the direction of the presiding officer and, and all of that. Now, after casting your votes, that's for the voters. We have to also make sure that nobody is intimidating them. And next is they can either leave the vicinity or stay 300 meters away from the vicinity after you've casted your votes. You are, you are paying attention, you are looking at what is happening and all of that. So nobody has any right to intimidate any voter that has finished casting the vote and decides that they want to wait to see the outcome, to see out the, the, the voting process. Nobody has any right to intimidate them. All they need to do is to stay clear 
from what is happening. So, so INEX is 300 meters away from the voting area to witness the sorting and counting of the votes. So it's very clear. So nobody can intimidate them or anything or send them home. It's your choice if you want to go home after you've finished casting your vote. It's your choice if you want to stay back and uh, observe the process and make sure that before you leave that place, you have a record of the votes, the number of people that have been accredited, the number of votes that have been cast, and the, the number of uh, the, the, the results according to how many, how many votes this political party in that particular election uh, scored. That's your choice. It's completely free. You are completely free to, to observe that. After every voter in the queue has voted, the presiding officer shall declare voting closed. At the close of voting, the presiding officer will do, will do the following. They will cancel all the unused ballot papers by crossing them out. Then they will sort out the ballot papers by party and thereafter loudly count the votes scored by each political party in the presence of the polling agents and observers. Now, this is where I was talking about the fact that based on what transpired in Oshun State, people are particular about knowing the number of accredited voters before they even start sorting the ballot papers and, and all of that. But as an election observer, again, we are not to interfere with anything. If the people are insisting that I, uh, the INEC official reads the number of uh, uh, accredited voters before he or she starts sorting and counting, that's their cup of tea. It's not up to us, even though we know that in the, in the rules and regulation, nothing like that is stated. But that's their cup of tea. Our own is to observe quietly and, uh, and, and, and report what we observe. Then they, they, they are supposed to stamp rejected on all the rejected ballot papers. Again, the polling agents can, ob can, can object to the fact that, no, this ink was properly placed. Uh, they, they, this should not be a rejected vote and all of that. I like I put rejected but objected. So the if the candidate or party agent raises an objection to the rejected ballot, that's up to I then they are they are they can recount the votes if a candidate that is there demands or a party agent demands that they, they, that it be recounted, but they can only do that once. Once they've recounted it once, they cannot they, even if even if they are insisting they can Anek is not obliged to, to count it a second time. So we have to also keep watch on that. If if candidates or polling agents are, are requesting INEC to, to count it in again, after they've counted and you have objected, they, they can count it once more. After that, they cannot count it again to please you. Then enter the scores of the candidates in both figures and words in the appropriate form, EC8 series. And then cross-check the scores of candidates and parties and the totals. Then they sign the dates, they stamp the appropriate form. They can announce loudly the votes scored by each political party. They request the candidates or their polling agents to countersign. Then they give a duplicate copy of the, of the completed and signed uh, form to the polling agents and the police. Then they complete the other form, they call EC40HI, for persons with disability information and statistics. And then they complete that, that persons with disability information policies in the PU booklet. Again, that helps INEC, just in case um, uh, people, are, people have done uh, registration uh, before they encounter, because I know somebody in Lagos that called during the, this PVC, whether I can bring the PVC to her house because she had an accident and now she's a person with disability. So I might not have her record in the in the in their voters register that that person is a person with disability. So, but with this uh, uh, detail now, when they go back, they will know now that there is a person with disability in that particular polling unit and the nature of the disability so that uh, if there's something INEC can do going forward to make sure that the person uh, finds it easier to cast their votes, they, they will be able to do that. Then once they've done that, uh, after completing the EC8A form, they will also complete the result, what they call EC60. That is the publication of result poster. It's like a poster that they need to paste on, on the 
uh, uh, whatever board that you have there in the police center is compulsory. It says pasting of form EC60E is mandatory. And any INEC official that fails to do that, we, is, 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 it says it amounts to the reliction of duty. And we will see that in the electoral act, the reliction of duty is a punishable offense. So once they've done that, they can then electronically transmit the result to INEC result viewing portal. So we know that anybody can have anybody has access to that portal. So because you need to register and all of that to be able to view the results as they come into the portal. So the the we as election observers, we should be keen and observe keenly that the electoral officer takes the uh, uses the beavers to snap the results and of that EC8A and then sends it to the INEC result viewing portal, what they call the IREV. We should keenly observe that they do that. Take the beavers, that's the, the, the officer will not take the beavers, the original copy of each of the forms in a tamper evident envelope to the registration area or ward. In company of the security agents, the police agents may accompany the presiding officer to the registration or ward collection center if they will feel like going. Observers can also go to the uh, uh, to the collection center <clears throat> if they feel like going. But know that INEC may not carry you in the Akasha. <clears throat> so we just have a few slides now and then we'll be done. Electoral offenses and sanctions, it's important that we, we, we bear this in mind so that we know uh, that INEC is very uh, keen about some of these things. Any person that registers in more than one registration center or register, so we don't have to deal with this because this is already pre-election uh, matter. Even so, this one, if you see anybody at the polling unit that is coming with two voters' card, it's an offense because no voter shall hold more than one valid permanent voter card. Because we are aware that in some places people have people are buying people's uh, cards so that they are not going to be able to cast their vote on election day. So if somebody comes to the polling unit with two cards, it's already an offense. And it's a maximum fine of one million or imprisonment for 12 months of votes. Now, if anybody impersonates, tries to impersonate another person or tries to vote twice in the same polling unit or tries to induce others knowing that such persons are not eligible to vote, that's also an offense that carries a maximum fine of 500,000 or imprisonment for 12 months of votes. Now, if you are in, if, if one is in on on unlawful possession of a voter's card, or you say, offer to say or buy a voter's card, that's a maximum fine of one million or imprisonment for twelve months of votes. Now it says any person that interferes with a voter casting his or her vote, or by any other means obtains or attempts to obtain information about the candidate that a voter wants to vote for or has voted for or communicates at any time to any other person information obtained at the polling unit about the candidate that a, a voter is about to vote for or has voted for commits an offense and says a maximum fine of 100,000 or imprisonment for three months or both. So those who are selling their, uh, uh, those who are trying, who are going to be making an attempt to inform people about who they uh, voted for so that they can go and collect the money after or anybody that is stretching his or her neck to see what some other person, uh, who, who somebody is voting for. That person will be committing an offense uh, also. Any polling official that fails to report promptly at his or her polling unit on election day without lawful excuse commits an offense of the election of duty. That fine is 500,000 or imprisonment for, tw for 12 months or both. Any person who announces or publishes an election result, knowing the result to be false or at variance with the signed certificate of return commits an offense. In this particular case, there is no option of fine. You are going straight to three years imprisonment. That's why even the media houses will be very careful when they start because they are, we all, all of us have access to the IRS. To the resolve viewing portal, we will now start publishing the results that this is the person that, uh, that has won the election and all of that. If you do that kind of thing, because it's only INEC that can declare results. Upon conviction, that person is liable for imprisonment of three years without any option of fine. Any 
polling agents, political party or party agent who conspires to make false declaration of results of an election commits an offense. That's a maximum of five or 500,000 or imprisonment for 12 months or both. Now, how do you report any incidents or what you observed? So this is particularly for, because we are going to be stepping down the training and also for those who are in the form one situation room. All the messages should be concise and location specific. They should give the following information, the time of the incident. This is particularly of importance because when you report that INEC officials have not arrived at a particular time, if your people escalate the matter, and they called, they now said, uh, we just called now, they, 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 are, they say they are already at the polling unit. Your people should be able to let them know that it's at this particular time that we, we got the report that INEC official had not arrived. So when they eventually arrive, if you were the one that sent the message to say that they have not arrived, please also send a message back to say at this particular time, INEC officials have arrived so that INEC, uh, uh, the, your situation room will also send that message to INEC to say, yes, your officials have now arrived at the uh, um, polling units. It's very important. The type of incident that you are reporting, late arrival, no, no resource sheet, uh, uh, intimidation of voters, uh, uh, unruly crowd, or, or, or uh, security personnel, no security, or, or things like that. The usual things that we usually see on election day that we report, we have to uh, be precise and concise about it. The polling units, we have to report, which polling units are we reporting from? Then the local government, we have to be precise about that because INEC Citizens Contact Center will be is, is focused on all the 36 states and the FCT. So you want to make the, the work they are doing very easy by pinpointing precisely where the event that you are reporting is taking place. You can, you can see examples of text messages. No security personnel yet as at 9.30 a.m. at PU 13.01.01.001 in Olorunda, AGA, Oshun State, for instance. So if INEC gets that information, INEC knows precisely the polling units where, where, where there, there are no security personnel. Or it says 9 a.m. No INEX staff yet. Precise. PU 25110301, AUD Primary School. That's Niger State. Or thugs disturbing at PU 24010500006, 2 p.m., Lagos State. Or ballot bus snatched at PU 18080901012. 4 p.m. Kaduna State, or intimidation of voters at PU 0110080015 Abia State. So these are examples of text messages that we received in the past that we are using that to highlight. So these are the kind of things that we sent to INEC. These are the kind of messages that we sent to INEC that they say INEC when when somebody likes your tweets or something like that. It's like endorsing the tweets, such kind of things. So, so, so because the information that you are sending to them, we immediately help them to pinpoint where it's happening and what kind of action they need to take to resolve whatever is happening at that particular time. I can tell you an example that we got from a kitty once that um, they were, they hijacked the, 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 the uh, uh, core members and, and, the, and the, ballot, the ballot buses. Instead of going to the collision center, they were taking them to a different place. The message we got that we escalated to INEC, that INEC escalated to the police commissioner in Ekiti State, that escalated it down, down, down and took it down to the, to the police officers who are supposed to be manning that area. That message, immediately saved the lives of those coppers because those people were apprehended and they were made to turn around and go back straight to the collision center where they are supposed to go in the, in the first instance. So if the message had not been precise, we would have been going back and forth until, uh, and sometimes I might just lose interest that these people are not serious. 
So we need to be precise. So we need to let our people know how to send message so that INEC can take action and they know the kind of uh, action they need to take. If it's beavers that is not working or by two or by, by uh, beavers fade. So we send that message. They can say, yes, uh, the presiding officer has informed us. We are, we are already sending uh, a new beavers to replace that. So when the new beavers arrives, we send message back to say that they have replaced the old uh, beavers. Uh, voting has, uh, accreditation and voting has continued, something like that. So we are always precise in how we report our message. And INEC loves it like that. And I think that we love it like that. We want to continue in that tradition. We tell INEC the time of incident. We tell them the type of incident that we are escalating. We tell them the polling unit where it's happening. We tell them the local, the local government. Yes, we're just putting the polling units, PU, this is, they will be able to say that. They will be able to know, but it will take them one level of going to search their database to say, which polling unit is this? Because all the polling units, the first two letters represent the, the, the state code, like 13, like 25, 24, 18, 0, 1. These are state codes. The states are arranged in alphabetical order. The second one, the 0, 1, uh, or 11, or 0, 1 in this uh, uh, PU 24, or 0, 8, 0, 10, those are local government codes. The local governments are arranged in alphabetical order also. Then the next one, the third digit, tells you the word level. That's word code. The words are also arranged in, a, in alphabetical order. Then until you now have the polling unit number 001 or 001 there, 006, 012, 015. So that's how we got our PU numbers. Yes, they can, with just the PU number, they can trace, but they will have to now start uh, doing one or two things. So that's why sometimes you just need to put like uh, um, those people that put uh, a lot of their local government or AU primary school, Niger State and stuff like that. So if we are sending this one to INEC, uh, we sometimes we go to the database to say 24010500006. Is which is in which area again? So we pinpoint the area for INEC or or a, a, a PU 18080912. We check the database because, like I said, INEC usually gives the list of polling stations to, to, to election observers so that it helps them to define clearly and precisely where they are reporting from. Now, these are uh, reporting numbers for Reclaim Niger. I know that Form 1. We have their own uh, election situation. We have their own numbers where you can send uh, feedback to or where you can send messages to. So, so you don't have to uh, send this, um, uh, use this number. So you replace this number with the Form 1 number that you are going to give to the Form 1 observers to send their messages to. So that's the end of the slides. So if we have any question, we can ask um, um, questions now. So it's time for questions. So you can unmute and ask question. Or you can type it in the in the chat. Okay, somebody okay, says some um, Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Quite a, uh, a very clear cut uh, uh, message. And then, uh, uh, what have you seen? So, what I want to ask specifically is that you mentioned uh, the role of an observer and a monitor. You see, not uh, as an observer, you are not in of being rejected by the previous machine. And cannot be accredited at that uh, pulling unit that person belongs to. So how do you, you know, escalate? This? Hello, Francis. How do you escalate? Hello. How do you escalate? Uh, to. Okay, so you say if the beavers refuses to accredit a, a voter, how does the voter escalate the issue, right? Your, your situation room of you know the individual who's yes you know how do you escalate you now talk to the individual involved that okay 
can I have your details to, to be part of what is sent to INF to, to say, okay, this particular candidate has his or all our records attached to that pulling. Why is the person unable, you see, to be accredited? Or it is it is just to report it that that happened and that uh, INEC on its own, the the uh, presiding officer for that unit would okay, okay. You so, know, uh, reflect the data that. Okay, so so the first thing is to say that yes, the presiding officer will reflect in the register that is failed accreditation. So it's not our business to start asking INEC why the thing why the thing failed or not. INEC will on their own uh, try to investigate why the beavers refused um, uh, uh, why that uh, particular accreditation failed. So that's why they are taking notes of the failed accreditation FA. So, so this man, this is not a, a question of whether the person is supposed to vote in that uh, polling unit because that has been resolved already. Now, the, the, they've, they've scanned your, your, your PVC. It has brought up your, your, your details in the beavers. So even though it has brought up your details, the beavers needs to authenticate you uh, so, and, and count you. As, so because each, each, each accreditation is counted. So bringing up your detail and then using your thumb or your face will then uh, authenticate you as someone that has voted. So if I if I if I if I have a list of four hundred people on on A, for instance, so and we are saying that once the beavers authenticates you, they move you from A to B. For instance, in the database of the of the beavers. So it might be, it might just mark you as accredited as, a, so if it's not able to scan your it's face or, or scan your, your, your fingerprint, it's not going to mark you as someone that has been accredited in that polling unit. So, so but the person can, that's why I say that INEC has reporting numbers also, that the person can report, can call the number and, and say all of that, but at that particular time, the person will not be allowed to vote. So if there's a higher up authority that's, that that maybe a technical, I can send their technical people to the to the to the uh, polling unit to see why the person is not able to cast this or a vote. Well and good, but they didn't say what what type of action they are going to take when it comes to that. The another person is asking as an election observer, can we cast our votes? Like I said, yes, election observers can cast their votes, but if you want to cast your votes, you have to take off your paraphernalia. So nobody will we, we, we know that you are an election observer. So you can then join the queue in your polling unit to cast your vote. So if you are on election observer duty and you want to be able to cast your vote, you can go to your polling unit and make sure that you are among the very first people who are accredited to cast their vote. So that by 8.30 when it starts, you are, you are or by, let's say by 8.35 or thereabouts, you have finished casting your vote. And then you can then go about your business of uh, observing what is happening in different polling units that are within your locality, as the case may be. Yes, as an election observer, you can cast your vote, but you need to take off your tag. You need to take off your election observer's kit, everything that will identify you as an election observer, so that you can be the, one of the first people to cast to cast your vote in the polling in the polling units there. Uh, and there is Abioye Mohamed. Yes, you can unmute and ask your question. Have you Mohammed? Go ahead or meet and ask your question. Hello, Mr. Francis. Yes, go ahead, sir. Thank you for the presentation. It was really educative. But just my is a form of a request that is it possible for us to get this recording? Yes, it's being recorded. So we'll send. But you know, usually the, uh, the the recordings are usually very large. But we we we'll try and uh, send it on um, maybe Google Doc for those who have uh, Google Doc to download it. But you will also have the slides. We have been using for elections. Okay, thank you very much. I have most of your papers. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, educative presentation. We are talking about uh, the signing the register yes sir. and while you were on that you also mentioned that if you were you should ensure that you sign that register before you move to any other polling unit for observation 
will leave the out of place if the observer on that they decide to stay in one polling unit and observe every proceeding from the beginning to the end. It's not it's not to be out of place, it's your choice. But usually, usually okay. your people your people can tell you to move around because once once you once the people start uh, um, uh, voting and you see that things are happening very well, they might they might something might happen in another place that they might they might want to say um, uh, people should uh, observe. I also know that um, a former one is also a member of the uh, Nigeria Election Situation Room. Okay, uh, and, and, and uh, observer groups they sometimes work collaborate with each other. There might be, there might, people might okay. receive a, a report from uh, citizens who have gone to cast their votes and, and okay. authenticate that report. They can call you to say, please, we, we, okay. we, the, the, we've heard, we've gotten a report from citizens. Like for us now, Reclaim Ninja, that we, we also make use of uh, citizen reporters. We can receive a report from that place. We can look at our database to say, okay, we don't have any observer in that place. Let's reach out to form one, whether they have an observer covering that place so that the person can go and authenticate the report that is coming from that uh, place. Something like that, so that whatever report we are feeding INEC or whatever report we are feeding the election situation room is, is, is already uh, uh, verified by, by, by an, an observer that we know and that we trust. So that's why people sometimes you move around, or sometimes you can get a call to say, please, something we, we just got a report from the citizen. So can you go and verify the information that is happening there before we send it to INEC? Okay. There's somebody Thank that you. is okay, man. There's somebody that is in Phoenix Smart. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, please, I want to find out if a uh, security operative know about uh, what uh, election observers were supposed to do. In one of the previous elections, uh, there was going to be a crisis. And I was away, I was uh, away from the position. But then the security agent came in, I think he's the head of them, four police officer. He came straight to me and said, there was a, a crisis over there. And I stood there, I, could, I didn't do anything. I wasn't doing my job. I said I was doing my job. Then he said, what is your job? I said, I'm an election observer and I am observing. Then he said, is that what you are told to do? Do they know the work everybody is to do? Because I thought since he came in, he should have inter intervened mm. with the people who are about to Maybe I'll do each other on the on the line. He shouldn't have come to me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. You are not. It's not your responsibility to, to to interfere, like we said. It's their responsibility to to ensure that there is a law and order. So that that security person that is uh, responding and speaking to you in that manner is completely wrong. They have. They also do training for for uh, election uh, for security personnel on the on that day. So so they have their own code of conduct. They cannot uh, dictate to election observers what they are supposed to do. Since you understand your mandate, you understand your role and responsibility. Don't listen to them when they start saying those kind of things. Put you trying to put you in trouble because INEC guideline is clear when it says that you cannot interfere. Um, uh, uh, it says you should not attempt to take part in the actual administration of the election or resolve disputes or complaints to avoid the possibility of compromising the observer group's eventual position on the manner. That's why you need to stay clear and stand your ground and tell the security person to do their work. That is not your work to, 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 to interfere or try to settle disputes and that, that, may, may, that are arising. That what you have done is to escalate the matter to your situation room and you are pretty sure that they are handling the situation and they have them so because your situation room still have uh, uh, contact with um, security personnel because even on election day we have civil society organizations whose primary responsibility is to observe the conduct of uh, uh, security personnel uh, organizations like ford um, clean foundation uh, not 
their responsibility is on election day to observe the conduct professionalism of security personnel, and they are doing training for all the security personnel. So we can escalate the matter to those security, to those kind of foundations, and even the situation room and INEC. And, and you know that on election day also, the police, uh, Nigeria police force, they give out their contacts, and, if, and you see people will be tweeting to their handle and informing them about the, the prof, uh, uh, or professionalism of their security details. So if anyone tries to challenge you in that manner, just take note of the person and report the person to, to your situation room or report the person to uh, really send a message to your situation room. Your situation room can forward the message to uh, not bring claim foundation or Nigeria police force to their hand so that they can- uh, Thank you. Affair. Please, can you change your name so that we have your name there? Because it's showing Phoenix 5, Smart 5. So if you can change your name, your device's name. Okay. Rofiat, Rofiat Owoni Koko says, in a situation whereby an observer change, uh, changes location, are they supposed to observe in the new location or go back? Anytime you observe what is happening in any place that you find yourself, not only, not only the location, uh, where your old location. That's why you went to check what is happening in the new location. Sometimes you have three, four, five polling units in the same vicinity. You want to go around and check uh, what is happening and making sure that things are going on smoothly in those polling units. Hajar Aisha Kusulema. You can unmute Hajara. Okay, so Ajara is not able to unmute. Any other question? I want to change my. Okay, Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Hello? Go ahead. I intend to ask a question about is there any specific polling unit assigned by an observer assigned to him alone or he is going to go around within the area he is? Usually, there is no polling unit assigned to an observer because when we are when we are uploading the list of uh, people we want INEC to our credit, the only information the INEC wants is the name of the person, the phone number of the person, and the local government that the person is going to be observing from. So, if you are mobile and you are an election observer in a particular uh, local government, you can go around the local government with nobody is going to harass you so long as you have your 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 tag on you showing that you are an election uh, observer because the election observers are going to be going around from polling units to polling units checking what is happening so that they can they can send reports if they uh, observe anything that is not um, going well in any polling units. Thank you. Any other question? Oh, go ahead. Hello, Francis. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, my question is this. In a situation where there is an, a, somebody uh, with physical disability, and for some reason she could, he or she could not go straight and do the needful, maybe it's, it's challenged with his eyes. What can one do as an observer in a situation like that? You, what are the observer? I can hear you. What are the observer can? What are the observer can assist the person with disability? Yes, can 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 we assist him or her? No, you cannot, because that person, the person, the person, the person, the person that does, uh, if the person is visually impaired, in the first instance, the person is coming to the polling unit with somebody, so. Is the the okay. official the INEC official will know what to do if if, if the person requires assistance okay. the INEC official should be able to say uh, what kind of assistance the person uh, should be given. Hello. That's yes, what. Good morning. Please, is there any identification or identity you give you give to us?
Hello, please take the question again. I say, is there any identity or identification object or something it gives to observers so that you can show it during the exercise? Yes. Um, INEC is supposed to provide you with an election observer's kit. So usually it has okay. uh, uh, this small jacket that you wear and the, the, the okay. identity identity tag that they give to you. So what we have said okay. is because you are going to do step down training, you are not the only observers in, in your state. Which state are you from? Yes, Jigawa. Jigawa. So you are not the only observer in Jigawa state. There are other observers who are not here. So you are going to do step down okay. training for them. What we have said is, and your 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 coordinators will, will, will work with you on that. You need to okay. bring the other observers to, to a particular location because the observers' okay. kits will be collected at the state level. I'm not sure they are sending anything to the world level. So all observer, okay. election observers will have to come to their state INEC office in the states to collect their okay. observers' kits. So what we are advising okay. is, as, as, as we've done in the past, is Mm -hmm. When you know the day that they are going to give the observer's kit, fix mm -hmm. your step down training on that day so that those okay. who are coming from the other, the, the different world local or local mm -hmm. governments, they don't have to travel yes. twice to the state capital. You understand? Okay. So when, yes. you fix your, when you fix your step down training on that day, all of you can move from the training venue okay. to INEX office. It's mm -hmm. easier that way when you go in group. For INEC to attend. Okay. So they can, INEC can probably give your, uh, if you are the focal person for Form 1 in that state, because this mm. is, they will, not, they will not want to do it by proxy. But when okay. we go as a group, they make it makes their work easier because they know that this, okay. yeah, you, you, you cannot take the identity and give to another person. You understand? Okay. Yes. Uh, so, so when you finish your training, or, or because usually maybe they want to finish it, they want to uh, stop giving the tags by two or something like that. So if mm -hmm. if if you have gathered in a place, so that's why I also advise that you probably put your training by nine o'clock so that if they say that by by two o'clock or three o'clock, that next office will close. So you know that you want to break the training. Mm -hmm. And go to our next office to collect all your tags okay. and then come back and complete your training. But if you okay. finish, if you finish the training on time, you can I finish the training and all of you go to our next office to collect your your, your voters uh, kit and your observers mm -hmm. kit, so the people can okay. start going home from that place. Because if you don't okay. do it like that, people will come and then they will go back and then they will come again. That's okay. uh, yeah. with the kind of. Uh, uh, cashless society that we have now and and and, and okay. transport. Okay, so thank you. Okay, ma'am. Yes, sir, that's okay. Too. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Okay, good I... morning. It's at twelve. Good, so okay. what I'm asking is, yesterday I Supposing learned that the observers is in Kano. Is uh, observed. Ira, Ira, please hold on a bit. Can you Ira, is Ira, Ira, so, hold on a bit. Aja, Ira, so hold on a bit. Okay. Is it? It's all right. It's all right. Uh, Sadatu, please go ahead. Okay, what I'm saying is, uh, yesterday I learned that some observers were called to INEC office uh, to be, I, th I think, maybe, I don't know if they are, they have give, they have given them something. Uh, they, they only wanted to screen them. So I will check, but I was told that some observers were in INEC office yesterday in Kano. Oh. So I don't know what happened there. Okay, so you can find that, you can check the information and then you can communicate with uh, Form 1. Okay. Mm. Okay. Adi Ayrat. Please, I want to commend the effort of the organizer. Thank you very much for the updates. I'm now asking if the observer is to observe where he has where is he registered, mm. is he allowed to vote? Yes, I have said it. You are allowed to vote, but you don't. You don't. Oh, uh, you remove your tag and everything because you can't stand on the queue as an election observer. So, oh, thank uh, you very much. Because you are supposed thank to be you. neutral in everything. Mm. Everything. Thank yes. you. Just to confirm. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so if there's no other question, um, 
you already you already in the in the WhatsApp group. Form one already has an, a WhatsApp group for the election observers. Uh, I okay. have a question. Go ahead, Shatu. All right, a clarification. I I thought um, as an observer, if you go to the your own polling unit as you're observing, you should be able to vote also. But the last uh, last uh, response you gave to the person that asked you I, it's not really clear for me. So can you make that? No, I said you can vote. You can vote, but you remove your uh, uh, your your tag or the clothes that you are wearing as an election observer if you want to vote. So, so after voting, can I still wear? Yes, after my... voting, after voting, you can put you can put your things on and go ahead with your work as an election okay. observer. The thing is that right, nobody should nobody should be able to uh, begin to look at you as an election observer uh, on the on the on the polling on, on, on the queue they are trying to vote. Okay. Oh, okay, makes sense. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, Hi. So I like to ask a question on this uh, stepping down the training. We know the peculiarities of our roads and state the distance between state capital and local government headquarters mm. and our various local government where we have all these observers mm. like you are saying on the day of collection of kits we should invite all of them to the state headquarters for step down training mm. are we sure they will be able to be they will arrive mm. before the collection of kits or we can stagger the state step down training because okay. of peculiarities okay uh, I, I understand because um, <clears throat> in some places, uh, if somebody are from a do state, my right? Hello? Hello? You are from a do state? I'm from a do state. Yes, because yes. sometimes if somebody is traveling all the way from again, they go there to, to, to Benin City, right? he's going to probably well. the, old, the old day and everything like that. So, so I think uh -huh. that in the Both. past also, in the past also, People have tried to engage with the state reg to say that it's, yes. it's, it's, it's a tall order for people to start traveling from the local government to the state to collect their uh, observers' uh, kits. Why don't you send it to yes. the to the world to the to the local government so they can pick it at the local government? I think people people have engaged on that level, and I will also advise that. Sometimes in that kind of situation that you've painted, it might be difficult for people to start coming all the way to for, for the step down training. What I will also advise is this as, as the observer group in Edo State, can you form yes. a WhatsApp group of the observers? We already have one. You already have one. We already one. have one. Yeah, so yes. so so before even before the, the collection of the observers kit, because this um, yes. this module that we have used, we are going to send it across to Hajia Ferida so she can put it in your WhatsApp oh. group. So you can use it to it's start people. engaging. Okay? You can use it to start engaging oh. your observers in, in a those states. So, and you also pay attention to when they start, uh, when INXs come and collect the kits. Because if, if, yeah, if, if, uh -huh. So, so I, I it's a, a, a fanga, is it obu that's your, 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 uh, record. Iba, Iba a fanga. Iba yes. fanga. yes, he was a member yeah. of civil society organization before. So he understands yeah, the peculiarity okay. of all these things. He understands the peculiarity yeah. of all these things. So, so, yeah. so, and he's somebody that is open. You understand and engages very well, yeah. so the, he can he can look yeah. at the peculiarities and, and 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 based on his own discretion or maybe maybe speak after speaking with uh, uh, his authority in uh, Abuja, they can decide to to take the things down to uh, the local government. We are hoping that they do that so that it reduces the stress of coming to the state capital, especially for those places where the state, the local governments are really, really far from the state capital. Very good. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, up, it's, it's up to their discretion. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So Aisha, Dr. Aisha Akombe, yes, we are going to send you the, the, the modules so that you can put it in your platform for those, uh, for people to use it.
So I will, I will, I will, I will encourage since you have a, a WhatsApp group, so you can discuss among yourselves how you are going to do the step down training and which one works well for you. So, so that's that's the discussion that can happen in your, in your WhatsApp group with the other uh, national coordinators in uh, in, in one. So let so if we do not have any other question, can we have somebody will give us a closing prayer? Okay. We thank God Almighty for giving us the opportunity for this meeting and for Enabling us to have a successful meeting. We pray that all men see our land and for a successful election, a peaceful and successful election, so that in the end we'll have cause to glorify his holy name. How is it be lying in our shaitan? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We are grateful. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 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 God bless you, sir. This is uh, Neymar Slabaika. Are you still in Kwara State? I just arrived at Abuja now. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you very much. We thank God for mm. safe journey. Uh, welcome. I thank God. Thank you very much for the wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.